Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. By golly, there's a lot of stuff happening in tech right now, isn't there? We're going to be tackling RDNA 3 in this video, an update to the specification, which does actually appear to be pretty much set in stone at this point, and some very intriguing rumors for Intel's next generation processors. Now, I just want to mention before we continue into the video too far that I might sound a little bit flat. I apologize. I am actually, well, let's just say dealing with a little bit of food poisoning at the moment. So my... Yeah, my brain isn't doing the full brain thing. But there, anyway, there is a lot of news, so let's get into it. Let's start things out with the 7900 XTX and the 7900 XT. So, Chili Dog, I'll leave, of course, a link to their Twitter account in the video description, has posted a couple of intriguing images. Now, you can, of course, see that a lot of what has been posted has been blanked out. Now, there's probably a really good reason for that. It's basically to help protect the source because basically the string would help identify whether it was from Gigabyte, Asus, MSI, or whomever else. And obviously, that would cause AMD to get the frown is on that specific company. But what we can can see basically is a confirmation as to the naming and b we can see the amount of memory so 20 gigabytes for the xt of course does almost certainly indicate a 320 bit bus and the xtx which is the highest in SKU, meanwhile is going to have 24 gigabytes of memory this basically means that the 7900 xtx has 12,288 stream processors or shaders or whatever you want to say. Meanwhile, the 7900 XT has been cut down, although perhaps not as much as what we saw with the RTX 4080 16 gigabyte model, and we have 10,752 stream processors, at least according to the rumors. So the 12,288 is again the flagship, which is, you know, specifications that we've seen for quite a long time now, you know, I leaked them back in the day, as have many others. Now, it's going to be very interesting, to be honest, what AMD strategy is here, because for quite a long time, I was hearing that the highest-end SKU was going to be called the 7950 XT. So, potentially, one theory I've seen online, and I've actually had a few whispers about this from some of my sources, but honestly, no one's 100% certain what AMD are doing right now, is potentially this could be a refresh. Now, I don't think a refresh, of course, for RDNA 3 would be an entirely new architecture. Potentially, this could be the vCache variant or, you know, the higher um, Infinity Cache variant, as you probably know. It's 96 megabytes Infinity Cache for the highest end N33, uh, N31, excuse me, SKU. So that's potentially what we're going to be seeing here. But further to all of this, 955 uh, zero pro on twitter has actually posted a couple of well cards actually now these are definitely engineering samples and you can see that there are a number of differences between what we suspect will be the finished version the most perhaps striking is that well it has a red pcb but there are also voltage testers you know locations and other bits and pieces basically voltage contact points and essentially this is a prototype such engineering sample card it's probably at this point pretty much final. I mean, the side drivers and other tweaks. It's not like they're going to be adding a bunch of ROPs or anything like that. So of course, to the final design. This is probably essentially what we're going to be seeing with the cooler. It honestly looks like, well, what we saw with N21's higher end. And you can also see that in terms of power consumption, well, honestly, this is basically good news. From what we can ascertain, there are two 8-pin power connectors. Now, of course, this could change with the final design. For all we know, it could have like 28-pin power connectors. Obviously not, but... Um, and in, uh, AMD themselves have already confirmed it's not going to have the 16-pin connector, which is perhaps a breath of uh, relief to a lot of people at the moment. Although, to be honest, it doesn't seem to be the connector for the 4090. It does seem to be the, uh, let's say, the adapter that's causing some um, shenanigans. Uh, but either way... I'm pretty happy with the design. I mean, honestly, at least in my personal opinion, AMD's cards have always looked good. The reference cards. Um, this is my personal opinion. I personally prefer the aesthetics of the Founders Edition cards from NVIDIA. With that said, you know, the size of the 4090 Founders Edition is just... It's just ridiculous. Like... It's bigger than most motherboards in terms of pure volume. It just dwarfs. I mean, just, you know, it, it's just kind of like, 
I don't even know what to s describe it. It's like, it's just ridiculous. Um, and to be honest with you, I'm hoping that one of the things AMD does, regardless of the performance stuff, is more consistency. Like, as regular viewers know, actually a couple of people uh, messaged me that there's 14 items available to buy, but they're all limited to only um, a lower power consumption, uh, only the 500 watts when it comes to overclocking, which is obviously not ideal um, when you're, you know, kind of a reviewer. I'd prefer to go with the 600 watt variant. And while I could BIOS flash technically, I'm a little, let's say, hesitant to do that, given all of the problems of the cards at the moment. Um, although, predominantly, they do seem to be around the connector, but there's also other questions, like if you're BIOS flashing a card which is, you know, being sold at 500 watts, you're going to 600 watts, you know, what's the PCB and other bits and pieces. So, I'm hoping that we will see some consistency. I still feel that NVIDIA, especially with the 4090 Ti, are probably going to have the performance advantage. But with that said, A, we've not seen the reviews, and B... Uh, we also don't know what the, you know, high um, specification Infinity Cache variants are going to be like. My personal guess at the moment is that the the um, N31 cards are probably going to be... I, I don't think they're going to be disappointing. I personally think that they're going to be hitting a lot of uh, positive points for people. I think that AMD are going to lose in things like uh, ray tracing performance, but again, that's expected. But in terms of power consumption, heat, size of the PCB, um, a lot of other areas, I think AMD are going to have a big win. And honestly, if you have a card which is considerably less power hungry, much smaller, easier to put into a smaller system, a uh, small form factor system, for example, especially some of, uh, one of the lower end cards like the 7800 series, I think it's going to have a lot of fans, even if potentially, I mean, I've been hearing so many different numbers in terms of performance. I've heard everything from it's going to be a little bit slower than the than the 4090 in raster performance to it's about on par. Honestly, I don't know whether it's to do with drivers, whether it's just misinformation from some individuals, possibly down to games. I'm personally only going to believe the performance when I physically get hold of a card, honestly. Even, you know, we, 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 you know, we, we know how, um, you know, conferences and stuff go. It will be very interesting, though, to see what is officially confirmed. Speaking of things and officially confirmed, there is a very interesting rumor that has been swirling around the internet. I'm going to leave a link to it in the video description. But basically, the assertion is that Meteor Lake will have... 22 cores but with an asterisk because of course it's intel and there's always an asterisk i'm going to refer to the top end SKUs here so the lower end ones at least for now i'm not going to mention but the highest end SKU is going to have six i'm going to repeat that six performance um cores and 16 energy efficient cores there's going to also be xe cores of course for graphics and doing other things as well the lower end SKUs um, are obviously going to go down in the number of um, cores however it does seem like for example on the lower end you've got six performance cores eight uh, energy efficient cores and still four xe cores and the tdp obviously changes significantly so the highest end SKU is going to be 125 watts although again power consumption and cpus have a uh, well, let's just say an interesting relationship, and 35 watts for the lower end. Now, what I will say with all of this is that, well, honestly, I can't get it confirmed. One of my sources is telling me straight up that this is incorrect, but only one source has told me that, so I'm going to do some due diligence to figure out exactly what's going on. I would not pay any attention to what I just said about, you know, this being incorrect. Again, one source saying that is not... 100% too much, and because I've not been feeling 100% today, I basically woke up for this video doing it when I was napping, so um, this is like, you know, kind of really tired, Paul. <laughs> uh, so I haven't spoken to too many people about this, but one source actually DM'd me and told me that they're pretty sure that this is incorrect information, but I'll be very interested to see what happens. I honestly, I would not put anything past intel because even if the plans were to you know go a different route um let's just for sake of argument say eight um performance cores perhaps there's something wrong with the process perhaps they found heat problems perhaps they just want to go a different direction whatever and therefore they changed the design it's certainly not the first time that uh, this happened during bring up of course and ultimately until a product is launched of course the specifications can and do change all of the time 
it's going to be very interesting to see how Meteor Lake and its successor, which is Arrow Lake, are going to perform. Allegedly, Arrow Lake is going to increase the number of cores again, uh, specifically re revolving around the um, performance cores. So the performance cores are going to go to eight. So rather than six, sorry, rather than six, it's going to go to eight. So it's going to be very interesting to see how it performs against Zen 4 Vcache. Although, of course, the timings for all of this and Intel's release dates, I mean, Intel's release dates are at best flexible for a lot of products. Um, but I will be very interested, like at the end of the day, I want Intel to be very successful because, you know, the more pressure that AMD and Intel can put on one another, it makes things good for us as customers. It's another reason, of course, I'm cheering RDNA Freon from AMD to compete against NVIDIA because while I love the RTX 40 series, you know, I still haven't got a hold of one, but while I still think the cards are really cool, they're not flawless, of course, I would also like AMD to, you know, there is a part of me that would love AMD to come out on top, even though I try to be non-biased because at the end of the day, you know, I don't really feel that you should have an allegiance to a specific company. I feel that you should just buy whatever product is the best for your cash. Um, I do want AMD to be successful and perhaps stick it to NVIDIA to a degree because I think it would be beneficial for us as customers, you know, for a clear win. But we'll have to wait and see how all of this plays out. It's going to be very interesting in the next couple of years for technology. And that's not even including other things like the mobile side of things. God knows what's going to happen in terms of the power consumption, RTX 40 mobile, the performance targets. I'm still hearing that FSR 3 is real from AMD as well. Not too surprising, of course, we've already had FSR 2. Uh, for what it's worth, I'm hearing that we're not going to see anything about it at this specific conference from AMD in just a few days. It's probably going to be early to mid next year that FSR 3 details start to trickle out. Um, how they how they evolve FSR 3 over 2, who the heck knows. It will also be very interesting to see what the compatibility is like with older GPUs. For example, the older RDNA 1 series um, and see what, you know... I mean, we've seen how DLSS 3, for example, is handled with NVIDIA, so it'll be very interesting to see whether they take a similar route here. With that said, um, I think that's just about it for me today, guys. If you've enjoyed the video, you know what to do. Leave a likey and all of that stuff, and I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.